All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. We are now recording. Uh, thank you everybody for joining us today. We'll start off with introductions and then get into our presentation followed by an opportunity for questions. We have until about 2.50 when we will stop because some of us need to go into the next grade levels meeting. Um, so today my name is Amy Kaler, not that it's not that every day, um, but I'd like to introduce myself as Amy Kaler. I am the coordinator for Star Academy, which is the principal. Um, and with me today, I have the first grade team. And then I also have Mrs. Donato, who do you wanna go ahead and introduce? who you are. Hi, I'm Francesca Donato. I spent some time with some of your kindergartners um, last school year. Um, I'm the educational specialist. I've been with Natomas Charter about nine years. Um, been teaching well over 20. I don't want to say how many at this point. Um, I support students with special needs, um, gifted. If your child has a 504 IEP, you'll be in close contact with me and we'll make sure your services and things are in all set up for this year. And then let's introduce the grade level. So we'll start off with Allison Perry. Hi, I'm Allison Perry. Um, I am uh, teaching first grade, obviously. I have your, some of your kiddos this year. I taught kinder um, at Star Academy, and I've been here for my fifth year, and I've been teaching for 13 years. Hi, I'm Julie Torres, and I am thrilled to be joining the first grade team this year. Um, I've been in education going into my 25th year, um, but I'm still learning lots and i very excited to be here. Looking forward to uh, working with you this year. Hi, I'm Savannah Taylor. I am new to Star Academy, um, to the first grade team. I've taught kindergarten and first grade, and I'm excited to be back in first grade and to meet you guys when that day finally comes. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Hannah Smith, and I will be some of your first grade teachers. Um, this is my first year at STAR, but I've taught previously uh, first grade before, and also I taught abroad. So I'm really excited to be with you guys for this unique year. All right. So that is everybody joining us today. Thank you once again, families, for joining us. We're hoping to give you some specific information of what things will look like in first grade. So I am going to go ahead and switch over to presentation mode. And we're going to go through an entire presentation. If you have questions during the presentation, remember um, questions need to be stuff that would apply to everybody. If you have a personalized question, feel free to reach out to us individually. Um, all questions will be answered uh, with the time allotted that we have at the end of the presentation, because quite a few will probably be answered as we go through. Oh, somebody else is trying to take over presentation mode. Um, uh oh, let's see if I can overwrite it. Francesca, are you able to see my screen? Yes, it's coming now. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and walk you through uh, dis our distance learning model for first grade. I'm going to start off with some information overall for the whole Star Academy um, families. And some of this information is repeated from if you joined us for the Star Academy meeting. Uh, about a week and a half, two weeks ago. And I just wanna reiterate some of it and then we'll get into the specifics and I will turn it over to first grade to go through those. And then at the end, once again, we'll have an opportunity for questions. Um, and just keep in mind, this is recorded and everything that's on here will be uploaded to YouTube. So starting off this year, our theme is Brave Leaders, Superstar Learners. And I think this is really important and embodies the time that we're in. Our teachers and staff are really going to have to be brave going through this dynamic time. And they're going to be challenged to 
try new things, learn new things, navigate a new forum of this online learning. And at the same time, our students are also going to have to be those superstar learners that they always are, but having to navigate through being distance learning part of the time and hopefully we'll get to where we can be on the hybrid model so we can get some of you in class a few days a week in person. Um, we are going to ensure that all of our teachers are using strong instructional practices. They will be basing their instruction off of the standards for their grade level in the different content areas. But keeping in mind that the teachers are trying new things, when we're trying new things, some stuff will work, some won't work as well. And so we're going to have to navigate that and everybody's going to have to be flexible. Um, we also want to note that we have a big focus on community building and we know it's important and it's going to be different since we're virtual and we can't see each other in person on a daily basis. So there's going to be opportunities for parents to meet and learn from each other and learn from the staff. There's going to be opportunities to have fun with the kids and as a family um, and more information will be coming about out about that in the next couple of weeks. Um, and most importantly, we want to make sure that we're providing a stable environment for our students and families. So you know what to expect and you know that it's consistent and your kids can get into a routine to make things easier for them so they can really get to that level where they are learning and achieving at their optimum ability. So getting the year started, uh, welcoming all of you back. We are going to have to navigate once again, getting materials out to families and getting you the information that you need to get started where everybody has their technology, they can get onto class meetings, they can access the curriculum. So what we are doing is next week on the 12th, 13th and 14th, we will be scheduling individual appointments uh, for you to come in with your child and pick up all the materials you'll need. That will be um, the worksheets they might need for the lessons they're doing, it, all of their like pencils, crayons, all that type of stuff, their technology they'll be picking up. And then the teachers will give you a quick um, kind of tutorial on what you need to know to get your child up and running for the first few weeks of school. Um, as we navigate this distance learning model. Uh, we will also have available virtual learning or virtual appointments for this meet the teacher piece. Um, for those of you who do not feel comfortable coming in in person with your child, just one on one with the teacher, you can schedule those virtual appointments through the teacher. And then we would schedule a time for you to come through our drive through in the pickup drop off area to get your materials that you will be needing, but without having to actually come into the school. And the teachers will be reaching out to you with that information in the next few days. Additionally, I want to note that the first couple of weeks of school, we will be doing assessments to see where students are at. Part of this will include iReady and they will, every student will be doing a diagnostic in the area of reading and in the area of math. And then the teachers will also be doing some one-on-one -on -one assessments, which they will let you know what that's going to look like for their class and for their grade level. And then some feedback that we got from parents after our Star Academy meeting a couple weeks ago was that it's, the schedules are very regiment and they appreciate that, but knowing that families also need some flexibility, especially if you have kids in more than one grade. If they're on more than one time for lunch and you have to go to the school to pick up lunch, we understand that. And you have the ability to go get lunch and pick it up or even eat lunch as a family at home during that time that you need. We would prefer if you can kind of go around the schedule, but if not, students will have access to all the material and any learning that's missed during that time you go to get lunch. Or if your family has something going on and you're not able to attend the live session, there will be recordings. And once again, the materials that they need for the learning they will have access to, you'll just be responsible to get that learning done and turn it into the teachers. And the teachers can help support you through that on a one-on-one -on -one basis. 
Then usually at the beginning of the school year, within the first two weeks of school, we have back to school night. For this year, we're going to hold off on that part and we're going to do a back to campus night when we get to the hybrid model because we know that once we get to the point where we're able to move into the hybrid model, there's going to need to be a lot more information given to you about what that's going to look like, what to expect, how we can help you prepare. Um, and at that time, we'll give you that information because we'll have had a chance to experience this new format of distance learning. So we know what works and what doesn't work and give you the most up to date information without overwhelming you right now. Um, once again, technology will be picked up in those first three days of the school year, the 12th, 13th, or 14th, depending on what day your appointment is. Uh, for first grade, your student will be getting an iPad at that time if you have requested technology. Uh, we're assuming that pretty much everybody will need technology. And then another thing, at the beginning of the school year, we usually always request a donation of $35 to purchase materials throughout the school year for your class. And then $5 goes to the art teacher, uh, Ms. Shane, to also purchase supplies for art. Um, we do know this is a dynamic and challenging time for a lot of families. We are going to be giving every student in the school the supplies they need to get started at the Meet the Teacher pickup. And they will be receiving crayons, pencils, colored pencils, a pencil sharpener, and erasers. Um, once we move into the hybrid model, we will pr purchase another set of materials for every individual student. This is a large cost to do that because we're timesing by 600. So if you are able to donate um, my school bucks, you can do that online or you can still write a check in the office. We appreciate anything you can donate. Um, we just wanna make sure that our students have what they need. And if you are not able to do that, that's perfectly okay. We'll still ensure that your child has everything they need. So before first grade goes into showing you what a day in first grade will look like, I wanted to present to you um, what or a model that we are using across Natomas Charter, which is the Learn, Do, Connect model. And this is to help um, everybody understand what the instructional times look like. So you hear a lot about we're going to do live instruction or we're going to do partial live or it's going to be a recording and the expectations around that. So this helps guide what it's going to look like in those different times because we're trying to keep this virtual learning format as close to what a re uh, actual physical classroom would look like. And in the physical classroom, the, teacher, or the teachers and students always go through these steps. They go through the learning part, then the do part, and then the connect. So the learning is when students or cl the class comes together and they could be in a small group, they could be independently or as a whole group, they're connecting in some way, whether it's the live instruction and they see the teacher live on a format like this on Google Meets, or it could be a recording and they go through the instruction. So around the subject area, reading, writing, math, social studies, science, whatever it is, and they're teaching them about something. And that instruction could last anywhere from 10 minutes to 20 minutes. That's a pretty good range for first grade. At the beginning of the year, it's going to be shorter. Some stuff might be about five minutes of instruction. And then the students would move into the do part. The do part is where the students are using the learning that they just did. And they're actually using that and then applying it to whatever they're doing. So they're practicing with that information, whether it be through guided practice that the teacher is leading them step by step. It could be through independent practice where they're working on their own through those steps that they just learned. It could be in a small group with the teacher, or it could be in a peer-to-peer -peer group, in a breakout group, where they're working and interacting with that information they just learned to come up with a product of whatever it is that they're responsible for at that time. And then after they do that, they would end up in the connect part. The connect is where they show their learning and what they learned. So it might be anywhere from turning in an assignment, maybe a writing that they did. So they learned about writing a narrative about, and they're writing a story on their favorite trip. Okay, so then the teacher's telling them about the elements in 
a narrative writing that they need to have. Then they'll go to the do part, which is where they're independently writing, followed by they would go into the connect where they're sharing it. Maybe it's just submitting it and then they'll have a conversation with the teacher later. Maybe it's presenting it out to the whole class or to a small group. Um, and then the teacher is able to check for understanding to see what did they understand? What did they not understand? What do I need or what are the next steps I need to go to? So as the first grade team is talking about the different parts of the day, keep in mind that the students will be moving through this um, model of learn, do, connect. And then I just wanted to show once again, this is the schedule that whether the students are on hybrid or distance learning, first grade will always start at 830 and they'll always end at two o'clock. Um, and then at two to 330 is when the teachers will have the virtual office hours. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to first grade and they're going to tell you what within that 8.30 to 2 o'clock, your student will be responsible to do and what it will look like and how it will be supportive for them at their age where they're not reliant on you doing everything for them. And just a reminder, if you go ahead and post your questions in chat after the first grade team is presented to you, I'll go ahead and read those questions and facilitate that for the families. All right. Good afternoon, families. In case you missed the beginning, I'm Miss Perry or Allison Perry. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start sharing some of the things that are part of our slides. This is an example draft schedule. On the far left, you see our on-campus day. Obviously, if we were hybrid, the middle is if they were in virtual, so they were part of the virtual when the students are on campus. So that's still part of the hybrid. But today, we're going to go over what the schedule would look like if we were in full distance learning, which is how we're starting the year. All right, so this will be the first slide your child will see. It has the day, should have their child's uh, teacher's name, and then the date. These are all going to be shared with your child via Seesaw. So each day we will upload, the teachers will each upload to Seesaw, which will be our platform, the way that we're going to share. And I know a lot of the kindergartners last year used it, so the child, your child can be familiar with it. So we're going to share this set of slides with your child in the morning. So if you have some time in the morning, maybe while you're eating breakfast, before we start the day at 8.30, if you go ahead and look through it, you can kind of see what to expect for the day. It, the first slide will always have our schedule, and you can notice on the far left, it has the times, then it has what we would be doing, and then a little icon that shows if we're live. And if we're partially live, it has a little asterisk next to it just to show that we would be doing some type of learning. And then we're hoping to have the students, instead of completely turn off their camera and log out, we know that this can be quite overwhelming for students. We're hoping that we're going to have them just turn off their camera while they do their independent work. So hopefully this will be able to be a time where they can still hear us get reminders of you have two more minutes to finish. And then when they're finished and we're gonna go back to the connect and share piece, they can just turn their video back in, turn their video back on instead of um, having to log back in. And it's kind of a little bit easier for them. Also on the right, you noticed there's a picture there. This is um, a picture of their binder and then their pencil pouch that they'll get. And every day it should have a picture right there just to show you what your child will need for the day so that you can help get them ready. All right, so our first thing that we'll start off with every single morning is class meeting. This will be consistent even on Wednesdays when the teachers will all have uh, meetings, will be in meetings at school, and Wednesdays will look a little different. But we'll always have a class meeting, a time for our class to connect, meet, and we'll also do calendar during this time. Now, it's a class meeting, and your family doesn't need to join. So it's just for your child, and we will be doing... Um, some social emotional skills, we'll be going over calendar, which is a huge part of um, incorporating our math skills, things that they've learned in kindergarten, also incorporating things throughout the year of what we're learning in first grade. So our primary focus during our class meeting is being able to create connections because this is such an 
important time for students to be able to connect, especially being apart from their friends. So this you'll see, and I'm sure you saw last year, a lot of singing, a lot of dancing, a lot of maybe them sharing things from home. So this is a great time for them to build relationships with their friends, maybe playing some games, all these different things, really building that foundation for our class. The next thing that we'll go into is phonics. Phonics is a huge basis in first grade and kindergarten. They picked up a lot of their letters, their sounds, hopefully quite a few sight words. Um, and maybe your child already is a reader or they're beginning, they're becoming an emergent reader. Phonics is a time for us to be able to dive into those skills, maybe go over and review letters and sounds. I know it's been quite a bit of time since they've had some instruction. You'll notice on each side though that there's a picture of what your child will need. And this is just a picture of the child's finder. It has a whiteboard. We're using a laminated um, sheet of paper. It has lines on one side and blank on the other side. So for this particular lesson, this child would need their whiteboard, their expo marker, and then their finder, which is, has their um, stories inside that we would share. If they maybe needed the link to our live, um, class link is also on there. And then also, um, if they were going to share something via Seesaw, so that same app, they would be able to click that link and be able to go straight to Seesaw to submit something to us. Next is reading. So reading and phonics kind of go hand in hand. Um, a lot of our reading in first grade is gonna be focused on comprehension. So a lot of these particular reading lessons in reading are gonna be focused on comprehension where the teacher will be reading a story and the child will be listening and then we will work together to complete some type of activity. And again, at the bottom, you'll see the live link just in case maybe they, were able, they weren't able to join first thing in the morning and they need that live link or if we're asking them to submit something to Seesaw. Now, when children are submitting things to Seesaw, they would just use their iPad to take a picture of it and we will go over that as teachers with them and also send out a tutorial to parents. And I know that sometimes the technology can be overwhelming. And so I want you to understand that this isn't something that we expect you to know how to do. And we're not expecting your child to know how to do it either. This is something we will definitely work with them on. Um, but this is the time where we would read a story and reading, and then we might ask them to turn off their camera while they are completing this activity independently. They can still hear us. They can still turn their camera back on if they have a question. We'll still be there for them. This is their time to be able to do and then come back after and they'll connect. They can share out with their peers what for this page, it would be the main characters of the story and sharing the names. Hello again, my name is Miss Smith. Uh, so, after reading, the students will have a recess and we will not give your child specific exercises or games that they should do during recess because we're trying to make full distance learning as close to in-classroom learning as we can. So normally at school, this would be a very self-directed time during which students can eat a snack and play. Uh, and that's what we would like the students to do at home as well. Uh, we did give some suggestions on this slide and important reminders like this would be a good time to use the bathroom. After recess, students will come, they'll need to log back in. Um, so they'll log back in. I know this may be a little bit tricky. So in the beginning, we'll help train them and get them familiar with maybe setting a 15 minute timer at home or understanding um, that they'll need to log back in after recess. Um, and just like reading, math will be partially live. It'll be a time for us to give some type of instruction and then for your child again to turn off their camera and do their work independently. But of course, if they have questions, they can turn their camera back on and ask us. Um, you'll notice the seesaw reminder at the bottom if they need to submit something. Sometimes students won't submit something because they'll come back and they'll share it out with us and we'll be able to check their work there and be able to give them feedback. So they won't always need to add something to Seesaw. Okay, and then we have our brain break. So kids' attention spans are typically equal to their age plus one minute. 
So first graders have an attention span of about six or seven minutes. So a brain break is very important and beneficial for them to take movement breaks through the day uh, and during our live teaching. So they'll have their longer movement breaks like recess and lunch, but brain breaks are more short and fun. Uh, we will typically do a go noodle video or movement activity together. Uh, and then when we switch to the hybrid model, teachers will include a selection of dance and movement videos on this slide. And some of them might even have some hidden academic content that uh, correlates with what we're teaching at that time. I'm going to talk about writing next. And with writing, it's going to be a partially live activity. So students will begin live on the video. And that's going to be the learn part. And then um, after that, the teacher will, will, will give a, a mini lesson. And then students will be released to complete an independent practice writing activity, which will be the do. And then um, they'll get a chance to possibly add their work to Seesaw um, at that time, which would possibly connect, or we, they might get a chance to share their work as well. All right, so for centers, um, this is a time for a child's teacher to work with small group of students and differentiate instructions. So we'll be really focusing on some specific learning goals for your, for your child during this time. Your child will meet with their teacher and a small group of students one day a week, and this will be live. We're gonna try it out for one day a week and see how things go, and then if we could do a little bit more, um, more times during the week as we move on through, through the months, we could definitely try that out. Um, on other days, your child will complete a variety of tasks, including iReady, Seesaw, and the A is for America book are some examples. Um, iReady is another program that will give families more guidance on, but basically it will give your students lessons and activities that are tailored to their specific knowledge and learning goals in both reading and math. And uh, the, A, the A is for America is a great way to interweave social study standards throughout the year. All right, so for lunch, um, it's basically just like that recess. The, this time should be fairly self-guided, but should definitely include eating lunch and using the restrooms. You could see a couple of ideas there. It looks very similar to the recess. Um, so um, it's just give them a break, move around, get something to eat. All right, for GLAD, reading time. So theme, um, is when we um, do a lot of read alouds during this time and we will use GLAD um, to teach our science and our social studies. It uses a lot of embedded of reading and writing. Regardless, this will be partially live. Students will begin on a video call with their teacher and classmates and then be released to complete an independent activity. Um, you'll notice the add to Seesaw reminder um, at the bottom. And then for art, so basically at the end of the day, all teachers or all first graders will have specials. So Mrs. Shane will be one day, who's our art teacher. One day might be um, Senora Quant, who's our Spanish teacher. Um, Mr. Strazo or Miss Elsa is our, our librarians and they will be another day. And then lastly, our Kinds Kids Club, which is with our counselor, Mrs. Hines. So these schedules are based on which class your child is in. And this is just an example um, of the slide of having like Mrs. Shane on a Monday. So every week your child will have each of those specials. They will just be on different days depending on your class. Um, all specials will be live and they will be using the same video call link that classes use um, during the other live instruction times. All right, so um, I just wanted to highlight a couple things before we go into the question section of this meeting. And part of this is social emotional supports we know are really big right now for our students and very important. And then also connections to the school, especially as we're navigating through this distance learning model and they're not in on campus. 
Um, so some of the supports that we have in place for students is Kind Kids Club, which Miss Hines does every year and all the grade levels, kids love it. Um, and she will be pushing into every class um, on a weekly basis. So she'll be working on social emotional learning, which might be how to build friends or um, really anything across the board um, that goes under social emotional learning. That's just what comes to mind at the moment. Um, they'll continue to have daily class meetings with their teacher. They'll have availability along with you for daily virtual office hours. We're going to be building in spirit weeks for students. Um, we're going to have school-wide mindfulness skills that Ms. Shane is going to bring in across every class. And then Ms. Hines also has counseling support. Uh, if your child's having a hard time, you can reach out to her and she can help you with resources and help support your student. Along with as a parent, if you need that support, she also does that. Um, and then really to go into the family supports, we're going to have family or virtual parent education nights. This is where you'll be able to learn about some ways to help your student, whether it's learning about Google Meets or Schoology or Seesaw, or even, hey, here's what the math looks like in our grade level, and here's how you could work with your child at home. Um, we're going to have a wide array of different nights that our parents can attend virtually to learn how to best support their student, because right now it's going to take all of us working together to ensure our students are getting the best education they can and best experience. And then we'll have virtual family nights. This is where we'll have fun events. They will be virtual. So we're being very creative. Um, teachers will continue to send out weekly updates to you and newsletters about the class. I will continue to do bi-weekly academy updates. If we have more information going on, you might see more emails from me. Like right now, I feel like there's a couple every day. Um, and then regular feedback opportunities. There are going to be feedback opportunities through the teacher uh, regularly for your class and then also through the school and through the whole charter. So um, you will have plenty of opportunities to let us know what's working, what's a challenge, any questions you have. Um, and we hope that having that open communication that we can continue to build a very supportive and um, well-rounded program for our students as we navigate a very dynamic time um, that we're having to just challenge our skills and learn new things. And then finally, ways that you can help prepare your child for this school year. One is to make a workspace at home. Uh, finding a spot in your home, wherever it might be, uh, that's quiet and designated for learning for the virtual learning days. Right now, it would need to be five days a week as we go into this uh, full distance learning model when we're in hybrid. If your child's coming to campus two days a week, they would still be at home three days and they would still need that spot. So think about a designated spot that's comfortable to them, seating that they'll be able to be comfortable in, uh, some kind of a tabletop or a desk that is at a good height for them, that they can have their computer and their papers and their manipulatives and whatever tools that they need in one spot and free of distractions as much as possible so they can focus. The next part is practicing wearing masks and social distancing. Masks are not required for our first grade students. However, they are highly recommended. And really, when we go into that hybrid model, this is going to be a critical element of being able to stay open. We need to keep the spread of COVID down, and part of that is wearing a mask. So giving your child the opportunity to wear a mask, not be touching it, um, and having that practice versus just sending them in and it's like, here, you've never worn a mask and now today you're going to be expected to. So by practicing, they get used to it. I see kids running around all the time now. They're wearing it. They're not phased by it. So working with your child on that and then also working with them on social distancing. What does that look like? Staying away six plus feet, but still interacting with others. So by you modeling, they're able to follow what you're showing to them and by practicing, They'll be ready by the time that we get into that um, hybrid model to be in the classroom and be successful so that we can keep the school open and everybody safe and healthy. 
The other piece is practicing washing hands. This seems like something that you would just do, but um, kids need to practice how to wash their hands, the appropriate amount of soap. We dry our hands, we wash them completely, say, or singing the alphabet for so they're washing their hands long enough or counting up to 30 would be another good thing for them to practice. These are all skills that they'll need to know anyways, so it's just an extra opportunity to practice some added skills with their hand washing. And then um, I would also highly recommend to begin talking to your child about what this year will look like. It's not going to be a traditional school year. So telling them this is going to be a different year. We're going to be flexible. Things are going to change. You'll be at home starting off, but at some point, you know, you'll be back in the classroom, hopefully with some of your friends and be able to see other kids. Uh, but just letting them know what it's going to look like and then talking to them about their friends and how they can have positive interactions with others, even though they're socially distanced. And they can also do virtual meeting or virtual play dates with their friends and showing um, different things that are in the room or whatever it is uh, that they have in common because the relationships are important. Relationships with other people and socializing is what makes people happy. And we need to remember that for our kids, but it's just going to look a little bit different this year. And the more we front load them, the more secure they're going to feel. Because when we just put something on them and say, hey, tomorrow now all of a sudden you're going to school and they weren't prepared, that's when they start to get scared. And when they get scared, that's where you get the reactions where they cry or they might kick and scream or they might be upset in some way because they're afraid, they don't know what it's going to look like. But if you've taken the time to talk them through it, they'll adjust really well. Kids are very resilient. And if you front load them, they're very successful. So we just highly encourage you to do that with them. And then now we're going to move into the question section. So I'm gonna exit out of presentation mode. We are still recording. And Mrs. Donato is going to go ahead and go through our um, <laughs> questions in the chat box. Sorry, there was um, somebody was trying to get in via phone call or something. So, Mrs. Donato, do you want to go ahead and? I tried to field the questions that came up since we've done a couple already today, and now I know some of the answers. I was able to type in chat. Um, I do have uh, a couple of questions. I did not know the answer with um, the first grade team. Is everything going to be submitted on Seesaw or are they going to bring in at any point handouts or physical things that need to be turned in? Anything that needs to be turned in will be turned in via Seesaw. So your child will be able to take a picture um, of it. We do ask that they keep it in their binder because when they come in virtually or when they come in, when we eventually get to go to the hybrid, we'll take out whatever's in their binder and give them new things. So we're going to use that binder that they're, that you're going to get, um, next week and we will use it even when we start the hybrid model. So that binder is super important to find a safe spot at home. Um, but when they turn things in, it will all be through Seesaw. Okay, great. Um, we have some parents who are modifying their work schedule to accommodate helping their students at home, and they're asking for a recommendation. What would you say are the most important times to be available next to their child if they're going to um, need some assistance? And my first thoughts were probably reading math and phonics, but um, I wanted the uh, team to address that. Francesca, I think you are definitely right. I think phonics, um, reading and math are definitely some of the, the major things that we're hitting in first grade, especially phonics. This is definitely a new road that we're, we're um, paving as we do it. And phonics is such a huge part of first grade other than learning to read. And I think that this is a huge part. Um, if you're there able to support them in any way, um, I, don't, I don't know how much support they will need exactly from you, um, but maybe a couple of redirections of having them sit um, and trying to attain to what, what we're, we're doing. But I know that both Ms. Torres, Ms. Smith, and Ms. Um, Taylor and I all 
understand that these kids are coming in at six and we know that they don't have quite the attention span of sitting for this long of a period of time. And this is definitely a schedule that we're gonna build up to with your child. I know that it looks like a lot for your child to be sitting um, from 8.30 in the morning until two o'clock. And that's definitely not something that we expect on the first day when we start full direct instruction on the 17th. Um, we know that they are coming off of summer and that this is a new transition for them. So we definitely are. But anytime that you are able, even if it's just in between a meeting, um, popping in and kind of just seeing how they're doing. But if you wanted to devote some time to be able to sit with them, I would say reading um, phonics and math are probably the most important. I'm going to cluster a couple together for Miss Kaler because these are like um, technology Chromebook kind of questions. So I know in first grade, um, the students will receive iPads. So they are not um, receiving Chromebooks. And um, another parent had asked previously, the Chromebook will, uh, the iPad will be adequate. You don't need to have a Chromebook or a laptop or any additional technology for that. Um, we have a question about, um, are the iPads going to have protective um, cases? Mm -hmm. They will, yeah. yes. Um, the iPads, correct, are going to be um, passed out during those one-to-one -one meetings that are being arranged with the classroom teachers. So on the 12th, 13th, and 14th, that's when um, families will receive the iPad with the other supplies, yes? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and then there were, um, Ms. Kaler, when will you be posting some people were not able to get in the beginning of the meeting and they want to see the whole presentation? Where can they find that and when will that be uh, given out? So it will be posted by tomorrow, um, hopefully in the morning. We have back to back meetings till about seven o'clock today and then these have to upload so it takes it a little time. Um, so by tomorrow, and it will be on the Natomas Charter YouTube page, I will also additionally send it out in an email to all families, and you'll have links to every grade level. Okay, and Mrs. Kaler, they didn't need to sign up for an iPad or anything like that. They're, they, um... Yes, you actually do need to, and okay. it was sent out in an email from Laura Burial a few days ago, but I will also be adding the link to fill out for the technology in my update that will come out on Friday. So on Friday, though, in your update, there'll be a link for families who did not um, see that or receive that from Mrs. Burial. And if they don't receive that on um, Friday, then call they should first, Cindy yeah. in the front office or email Cindy in the front office because there's something wrong with how we have your email address. All right, and uh, sometimes as some people have mentioned, check your spam folder too, to make yeah. sure that an uh, NCS mail is coming directly to you. Yes. I think we, I got everything I tried to field. Um, okay. Those during the, during the chat, if there was something I knew. Um, oh, I do see one about a Chromebook that they already have a Chromebook from kindergarten. You will want to turn that back in so you get an iPad. And they should have reached, IT should have reached out to you, but if not, you can call Cindy in the front office and tell her and she will get that taken care of for you. Okay. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the recording. As I said, we'll be sharing the recording with you and we'll also be sharing the slides with you so you will have access.